no man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. Think presence that is all over us tonight in the name of Jesus. This is a time we believe. This is a day we trust. And this is a special moment in the name of Jesus. We thank you for every sickness is healed, every trouble who is gone in the name of Jesus. Every kind of disturbance, every kind of issue lives in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. And Lord, we thank you for the joy in our hearts. We thank you for the peace in our hearts in the name of Jesus. We bless your name for this service and for this word. We bless your name for the worship. We bless your name for the ministration that is happening and is going to happen in this place in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. We have prayed. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give a mighty hand of praise to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please turn to your neighbor on the right and on the left. Welcome them in the presence of God. Tell them thank you very much for coming. Thank you uh, for being smart. We're excited to see you. Praise the Lord. And welcome back from Men Gather Conference. We were supernaturally blessed. Hallelujah. And we are expectant. We are looking forward to the greatest, uh, my great prize conference. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we have my great prize coming up. Uh, my great prize season four coming up on the 25th of June. Uh, 2022 and we are excited at Kololo Independence Grounds. Praise the Lord. So please get your book, get your list, begin to write all the people you're supposed to invite, write those 10 names, write those 15 names and start to reach out early. Praise the Lord. Every day you wake up, please uh, make sure you call them, check on them, find out how they are doing and remind them of this special day that is coming on the 25th of June uh, this year. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we are very excited. Uh, we welcome our first-time visitors. You can have your seats for a moment. Our first-time visitors uh, that have come today, thank you very much for coming. So we want to remind you, we have an information table, and we would request that you could check uh, out on that table after here. Uh, to find out the major activities of the ministry, uh, to find out issues to do with our dedication of children, and also details to do with our partnering with the ministry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we have a Fanero newsletter, and we received our first Fanero newsletter last week. So we have some of these that will be on the information table, as you move out after service, please uh, please grab yourself a, a copy so that you can go and share with your family. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we would also want to thank you very much for your special uh, giving. And we would like to give some guidance, Father, on your giving. One, we encourage you as much as you can to continue using the online platforms. Uh, for your giving, you could use the Fanero app. You could also use our bank accounts. Uh, you can as well use our website uh, or uh, the MTN mobile money, Airtel mobile money uh, for those that are in Uganda and M-Pesa for those that are in Kenya. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 
And we want to also remind our new converts that we have a discipleship class. We have a discipleship class that takes place every after the first service and the second service. And it happens in the upper grounds, Uma upper grounds, gardens. You can go there or you can ask an usher to direct you uh, so that you do not miss out on these classes. Praise the Lord Jesus. Uh, did we read our devotion for today? So let's turn our eyes to our devotion. You could probably have it on your phone or on the screens. And today is the 15th of May, 2022. And the devotion is by our father, Apostle Grace Rubega. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 is our theme scripture. And it says, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under heaven. And our theme for today is by heaven's schedule. The Lord is a God of seasons and times. He is not random and careless in his timing. That is why it is very important for us as children of God to understand heavenly time and ensure that at all times we are in the perfect timing of God. Praise the Lord. The man of God writes and says that I have known many Christians with absolutely no sense of spiritual time. They are cautious of what time they must arrive for work, for a work meeting, and do everything not to be late. They are cautious of what time they must take a flight and do everything to be at the airport in time. They are also cautious of what time they must sit for an exam and would not dare arrive a minute late. But none of this can be compared to the great and immeasurable importance of being conscious of spiritual time because it is this time that will always determine the direction of the most important things of your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Heaven has a calendar of when you are supposed to submit to a particular ministry, when you are supposed to meet a certain individuals who are responsible for your elevation, or when the next milestone of your destiny is supposed to happen. How aware are you of these times? Some people are terribly behind schedule, and they do not know it. Their ministry should have grown to significant levels by now. The anointing over their lives should be functioning at a deeper grace by now, but because they did not pay attention to spiritual time, they are behind. Today, I wish to urge you not to just pay attention to earthly time, but align yourself to spiritual time. Be keen enough to inquire from God about when you ought to take your next step, where you should be in the next few years, and the timing of your various uh, milestones. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, study, please. You can read First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32, Matthew 16 and verse 3. A golden nugget says heaven has a calendar. Be keen enough to inquire from God about when you ought to take your next step, where you should be in the next few years, and the timing of your various milestones. Praise the Lord. Uh, pray this prayer with me. Say, loving Father, I thank you for this truth. Thank you for the cautiousness that you have stirred in me to be more aware of spiritual time. I cannot be left behind. I refuse to be behind schedule because I lean into the urgency and the timing of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for coming. We are excited to see you. Uh, join me as we welcome the choir. Thank you, Pastor Joshua. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. 
Would you please rise and embrace the King?
is your way out. We love, 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 you, 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 you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. Ooh, help me say. Tell him now. Yes, only.
everything fades away. One weakness dissolves. Tell him. 
name tonight. All the glory said. raise your voice and thank God for this morning afternoon for what he has done in your lives for what he continues to do in your life thank God for his faithfulness thank God for his mercies thank God for the peace that passes all understanding God's our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Thank God for your house. Thank God for your ministry. Thank God for your family. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. You are. I'll exalt you, Let's sing it. 
together. Let's go. on the left and on the right and tell them you had to be here and God is going to do you good hallelujah tell him God is going to do you good in Jesus mighty name let me take this opportunity to thank the setup team security team for I'll tell you why these guys set up on Wednesday for service on Thursday set down Thursday after service midnight 1 a.m. on Friday they were setting up Kololo for yesterday and then they sat down yesterday night, late, to come and set up that she would have service. Let's clap for them. God has given us such a wonderful people. And of course, let me welcome the men from the Men Gather Conference. It was amazing. And I know very few men slept last night. How many of you understand? Hey, I said very few men and the woman put up. <laughs> Come after delivery. After, after service for deliveries. And after they say, oh, okay, you are streaming. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yes, I know many people didn't sleep last night because it was too much. So we thank God for that. Marriage bands. Um, Christopher, Makubia, and Juliet, Juliet Namukwaya, come. Mm. 
Julie, where is Christopher? He's somewhere. Bane Christopher Abuzi. You had scared us. Why about Takuba? I think I'm in a busy movie. Christopher met a beautiful woman called Juliet. Namo choir. And then the Lord spoke to them to settle down on the 11th of June 2022. So, when you see them walking together, God spake. He didn't speak, he spake. So we prayed for them in the first service. We just wanted to introduce them to you, uh, to see them officially, and congratulate them. Congratulations. All right, we're going to go to dedicate children very quickly, because we got a lot to share today. Mudua Dalin, Lydia, Simeon, Ezekiel, Elijah, Abes Gumkama Chizito, and Elsa, Abalindirida Mukama. Oh! Abes Gumkama, Abalindirida Mukama. That's the longest name I've read here. Abalindirida Mukama. Elsa, Abalindirida Mukama. Will Chizito, will those ones meet, uh, fit on the passport? I want to see Elsa. Where is Elsa? That's Elsa. Abalindirida Mukama. Koradego Shikatalabai. How can that kid fail? Are you telling me how can Elsa fail? It's not possible. You, you name names that even the devil fears to what? He comes and says, Well, those of you who don't know the meanings, especially for our brothers and sisters who come from out of Abalindirida Mukama is they that wait on the Lord. You can't name that. I mean, if, 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 it was, if it was English, it would be a sentence. They that wait on the Lord. But here it's one name. Now, one of them is Abesiga Mukama. Again, to translate that for you who don't know the language, is those who trust in the Lord. So, some children in Africa are sentences. Oh, glory. So, Abigail, Daniela, Itara, Ajuang, Tumsime, Abija, Abija, Gabriel, Austin, Salem, Mulangira, Isaiah, Dylan, Jeremy, Masembe. Then there are some joining us online. Really wise, Ntulume, from Manifest Ginger, and then Adriana, Nyonyozi, from Soroti. Come quickly, and then we dedicate your children. Firstly, like I told you in Fanero, children, what? Those are not our problems. You have not yet given birth. Don't worry. It will come, even if you're 70. Just believe God. It will come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wow. Kulika. Hmm? Congratulations. You guys are quick. Some of you just got married a year ago and you're already manifesting the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. <laughs> Let's stretch our hands towards these children. Father, we thank you. The Bible tells us that you're able to keep whatever is committed to you to the day of Christ. And these parents have brought their children to you because you're able to keep them. They're saying, we are committing our children to lead, to direct, to provide, to teach, for their peace shall be many. You establish their going in and going out. Your work on their life shall be great. Among them, these that we're praying today are going to be the greatest men and women the world has ever seen. 
We thank you because they'll be ahead of their peers, that they'll not give in to the deceptions of their times, that perversion and stupidity will be far away from them in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak divine health over them. May they be the kings of their times, the presidents of their times, the political influencers of their times. May they stand where men fall. May they have a full life. And may they go to their grave full of age as a stock of wheat in its season. In Jesus' name we have prayed and believed. Amen. God bless you. And congratulations. I want to pray for your offering. Father, we thank you for the most generous people in the world. Continue to work in their lives and amaze them in whatever they do. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and believed. And all saints said, by the way, I always thank you for being generous people. I'm not saying it to encourage you. I'm saying it because I mean it. We are giving more and more and more every month. So thank you for doing that to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word? Today, our conversation is going to come from the question that sometimes I have heard non-believers pose to ask believers question, a question of questions that I've heard us believers sometimes question ourselves. Sometimes we question our leaders on this fundamental issue. That you're telling me about a good God. You're telling me about a very wonderful Father. Why does he let evil to happen to people? And especially with the people of the world, there's a justification that comes with who this evil should be to or not to. And they say, why do bad things happen to good people? They say, this man was a good man. And then his friend plotted to kill him. The man was a good person. And then his friend what? Killed him. So we have a question. Why did God allow this man to kill his friend? Why was an innocent man killed? See, fundamental question. This child did not have any crime in the world. Why would God let them die of a disease? Fundamental question. This woman was not responsible for whatever happened in her marriage. But you see, now she's dying as a consequence of the actions of her husband. God is not fair, so they say. So we blame God on what's fair and what's not fair. And then we don't take time to understand God and his mind behind whatever is happening. And today, I want in a few minutes to help you have another perspective about these questions and what we are supposed to do and answer not only to ourselves, but to the world that is lost. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, the third verse, it says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And indeed, like I said, this message that you believe you attend every Thursday, every Sunday, you're reading devotionals every morning. It is a hidden mystery to certain people. Not everybody understands it. Not everyone understands the good news. And unfortunately, even for us who have received Jesus Christ, not many of us have come to the full understanding of what we have in Christ Jesus. And I'm not going to blame you for that because foundationally we are all taught differently. We are revealed differently. We are shown differently. We all have our foundations. Some of you began from churches that were teaching differently. 
And now you're trying to adjust yourself and to wash your thinking and construct yourself right because of the foundation that was given you and the lies or deception that you've believed over the years concerning the truth, what we call the truth. And to know that you are living in deception is because what you assumed was the truth was not setting you free. But we still have people who are on a journey dealing with different issues that are not yet fixed. And some of these things have taken so long. I believed you, Jesus, for a healing for a long time. I have confessed, I have prayed, but diabetes won't leave. Confessed and prayed, my heart is hurting every day. Confessed and prayed, my marriage is not changed. I have confessed and prayed, but this is not changing. I can testify to my friends that I quit smoking, and now I'm back to the cigarette. You know, so there's questions fundamentally. Or am I to accept it to say, oh, you know, this is the way of the Lord and this is how he has met me and I just need to go this way or do I keep fighting? Some give up and say, you know, I'm tired. God, I've fought where I can and I'm worn out. You know, some accept defeat and they die. Some still fight through. But the questions linger. My finances are not fixed. What am I missing? Why isn't this happening the way I expect it to? You see what I'm saying? And you're right to ask those questions. The issue is that you need the right answer because you might get the wrong answer. So in Corinthians, Paul says, if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them which are lost. So it's a, there's a possibility of what you think you're understanding right now, what you think I'm teaching you and you are interpreting right, to be found so hidden from another individual. As a pastor, I have been dismayed. I have broken many times. When you teach for years, a concept, and you think somebody understood it. And then after some time, you discover they actually never understood it. It actually did not work in their lives. You're not blaming them. You're just saddened that it did not work. Because you expect that it should work because there are people who have heard the same message and it has worked for them. And even they can give examples and say, I think I saw this fellow go through this and I've seen it work for them. Why isn't it working for me? So he says, when we go to those who are lost, to whom the gospel is hid, the Bible says, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. The God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. Not may shine upon them, not could shine upon them, not will shine upon them, it should. There's a defined command. But once the gospel comes upon you, it should shine on you. That means it should show its fruit or effect on your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. So he says, he has introduced us to a very important word for us to examine here. The God of this world has blinded them. Very important aspect to discover, finally, for some of you. Who is the God of this world? Who is the God of this world? Answer me. Satan. Satan is the God of this world. So you hear a believer saying, uh, I don't believe that Satan is the God of this world. He didn't create it. He cannot beat God. That's ignorance. The Bible has said that Satan is the God of this world. And it is by the same power that he exerts to blind men from coming to the light of the glorious gospel, which is in the, 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 the glorious gospel of Christ, which is in the image of God, so that they might have the deliverance, the answers, the breakthrough that they so desire to see in their personal lives. Now Paul is telling us that the blindness you see that deters men from the light they should behold to be delivered is because there is a God, small g, who is in charge of this world. 
So you cannot say, oh, uh, me, I don't believe that Satan is, not in is in charge of this world. I think God is in charge of this world. You must be very clear to understand what it means. And let me explain this. You remember in the creation story when God created man? Huh? He says, he said, let us create, he said, man in our own image and likeness. And let them have dominion over the fishes of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Let us, let us, let them have everything. And he created them male and female. And he gave them dominion. He says, replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion. Take over it. This is who you are. That's the power that I've given you. You are the one in charge of the world. You see, you are the one in charge of the world. He blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply. But then Adam and Eve fell. You remember? So in the fall of Adam and Eve, they are stripped of the glory of dominion to the earth or to the world. You understand? When Adam and Eve eat the forbidden fruit, they are stripped of that glory to have dominion over the earth, to subdue the world. It is taken to the devil. Remember, there is history that is not written in scripture biblically, but the extra biblical texts have been written concerning that history and the Bible seems to agree with that history. For example, at one portion of scripture, the Bible says that the Lord did not create the earth in vain. That means, originally, when God set out to design the earth and how it should look like, Isaiah 45, he established it and created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. You see? He formed it to be inhabited. That's how the earth was formed. It was created to be inhabited. When you go in Genesis, is the earth inhabitable at the state in which it is found? Answer me. No. The Bible says in the beginning, the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the faces of the water, the waters. That means the earth at that particular point, when God was, when, when we get to Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, here we find that the earth is without form. But Isaiah tells you, God did not create the earth without form. Here we find the earth full of darkness, inhabitable. But Isaiah tells you that was not so in the beginning. That means that there was a time frame in history, world history, where the earth was created perfect by God to be habitable. And then, you remember the time where Satan falls? Huh? You remember the fall of Satan? With a third of his angels? And then they fall in the world. What happens at that particular point? Him and his cohorts mess up the world. That's the history Many people don't understand. In fact, Genesis is not the true beginning. Oh, it's not the book that gives us the oldest account of life. The book that gives us the oldest account of life is John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. And nothing that was made was made without him. The Bible says in the next verse, all things were made by him. And without him, nothing was made. You see, so John actually goes before whatever you see made is made. You see? So much as in your Bible, Genesis is the first book, it does not bear the oldest record of life as we know it. John actually gives you the beginning. But you see, it takes a certain experience spiritually 
and a sudden evolving in the mystery of the new birth for a man to have a perfect understanding of these things. So now John would write to you and tell you, the beginning was not when you read Genesis chapter 1 verses 1. The beginning was when the word existed even before anything existed and the same was with God. And it was God. And nothing without this person, the word, was made without him. For by, all, by him all things were. Now you understand why in Genesis, God said, Elohim, the plural, let us create. He didn't say, I'm creating. Let us. You see? So, it is God the Father, Son, and the person of the Holy Spirit, existent on the earth to execute what? is being spoken. Are you following with me now? So, if you have understood to this far, it means that the earth was created right, inhabitable. Then, Satan falls with his angels. They mess it up. And then, God has to rebuild it right before man comes in. That's where now you begin Genesis. You see? And then, he puts man in charge. There was nobody here, so I didn't need it. Now it's habitable. You're here to inhabit it. Take dominion over it. And now man what? Falls. And when man falls, he loses his what? Place of glory and power to dominate over the earth. Now, at the fall of man, many fundamental laws, spiritual, natural, and otherwise, were frustrated and changed by Satan because the heart or the spirit of the enemy is to kill, steal, and destroy. Many things as of elements, creatures, seasons, they were all changed and frustrated by the laws of the God of this world because he was in charge of this world. I'll give you a typical example. In the beginning, Adam coexisted with every animal. You see? A lion would not attack him. There was no place where you would say, okay, now lions are in this area, and then Adam live here because the lions will eat you up. No. That is why later, at the reconciliation of these things, the Bible says the lion will eat straw. See, the lion will eat straw like the bullock. Somebody shout hallelujah. And he says, and the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. That's a reconciled place. That's where we're going to the end of things. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, that little female Anopheles mosquito, with it, it's plasmodium was not meant to come and bite a human being and then the human being should suffer from malaria because God had not created a human being to be sick and he had not created an insect to make you sick. He had not set a tiger against you because you were its boss. You understand? He had not, he had not sent a jaguar against you because you were its boss. He would not set a bacteria or virus existent to be against you because you were in charge. Then the fall comes and then the God of this world takes charge and then he starts to frustrate certain laws, natural and spiritual, to turn things against mankind for our destruction. So now I think you know why it began. God just didn't, you see? There was a there was an involvement of man here. And there's a bigger part, or the biggest part of it, which is Satan. He's the one at work. God is not killing people. It is Satan killing people. Because he kills, steals, destroys. And they say, oh, so then why does he let them? No, he has given you a choice to say, I have refused this. But the question is, how do you set this out? How do we set this out? Because even after the fall, even Adam in his most fallen nature, that man could live with nine, for 900 years 
with a fallen body. So why do we see, for example, as the years evolve, humanity dies younger and younger and younger and younger? Why? Because we are disintegrated from the original knowledge, the truth of what is. We are far away from the truth every day. Because as we continue to teach and men continue to find their own ways, the Bible says the Spirit speaks expressly that in the last days men shall teach doctrines of devils, even as the doctrines of Christ. They will give heed to seducing spirits and a little living, a little diversion. And what was pure is coagulated and your vision changes because you're seeing the wrong thing from how God designed it to be. And the far you are away from the truth, the more you start to, dis to give in to deception, the more you start to take lies as true. And they kill your conception of faith. Remember how the Bible says that a little even, a little error, a slight inclination to error, or a few false teachers, live as a whole lamb. It perverts the whole conception of faith or misleads the whole church. That's what we are. Because as years go by, the church continues to go farther and farther. Recently, I was having a conversation with some clergy people about the move of the what we used to call the charismatic Pentecostal movement. And then now we have entered what you call the new Pentecostal movement. And the leaders or proponents of the new Pentecostal movement, when you watch them on television, you can see that they are throwing away the most integral parts of the gospel every other day. And what now has happened, especially in the most developed countries, in the church of Jesus Christ, the most prominent teachers or ministers of the gospel are actually counselors. They are counselors. They just tell you, oh, don't give up. Things will get better. One day. That's what they teach. But if you want to understand the dangers of neo-Pentecostalism, there are certain men you will watch on TV all your life and they'll never talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They'll never talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Not in discipleship class, not anywhere. Because if you teach about this gift and then you pray for this person and they don't heal, what are we to do? Do you understand? They're not crazy enough to believe God. In the first service, a woman walked here. She had broken her femur. I don't know whether some of you saw her. Old lady, she said, and I'm an evangelist. She, she came with a clutch. She said, and I'm an evangelist, and I'm not going back with this stick. And I started praying for her. And I prayed, and I said, let's walk. And the bone started to heal. But because she was feeling it wasn't healing as it was, she turned to me and told me, Pastor, you're joking. I must walk. <laughs> Father, I thank you. And then she squeezed my arm. I just started feeling her nail going through my skin. She walked out without a cane today. <laughs> She said, I cannot attend women's conference with a stick. No! Now that is the generation. Why? Because we were taught to believe God. We were taught to believe God. So uh, the newer group of people, if you get stage four cancers or anything, you know, there's no hole, let's just pray. But it's... You understand? It's wanting. Why? Because you have not defined the foundation that this individual needs to stand on to believe God. They cannot teach prayer. They cannot teach about fasting. They can't. You, you watch some of our new guys who are prominent on some international stations. They, they cannot teach about fasting. They cannot teach about consecration. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? They can't. They can't rebuke you out of sin. It can't. They can't. Because that every day, it is now tell the people what they want to hear. You're offending us to tell me that I'm a sinner. You offend me. You see? How dare you say that I'm not a man when I feel that I'm a man? You see? I feel it. How can you say I'm not? How? You see what I'm saying? So it's, we minister to the emotions of men, but not the heart of the Father. And that is why in many, many ministries, the, the miraculous is working out. The miraculous is working out. The miracles, I'm talking about miracles. Blind eyes, deaf ears, those are things that are dying out in some parts of the world. I've, I've, I've been to Europe, I've been to America, I've seen it with my eyes. One time I entered a church somewhere in... Uh, Port Huron. And I have a word of knowledge and I say, there's a gentleman here. You're paralyzed from the west downward. God is healing you now. There's a guy I think he'd gotten in an accident or something. And then the power of God goes through this man and immediately his bones strengthen and he walks to the pulpit. Everybody clapped their hands. And after clapping their hands, the leadership of that ministry calls me over lunch and they said, you are not welcome here and you have to go back and repent to God to forgive you because you stood in front of the pulpit and said, God heals every disease. Because I told them, God heals every disease. A paralyzed man has just walked. But I'm not welcome to that church because I said God heals all diseases. You are offending people and leaving us false hope, they call it. And you're going to put us on a, in a state of trying to perform what we don't believe happens anymore. And a guy sent me a dossier of theologies to defend his place of why healing should not happen today. And I told them, you know why? Because you live in a very rich nation. You, you have never been in a state where a woman has to drive 40 kilometers to give birth. If it was in your nation, you'd learn to believe God. Yeah, because the presence of these things, the, the comforts of life, sometimes they tend to make us forget God. I mean, if you suffer from this, there is a drug to swallow. If you go through this, but if you live where I have lived and you come from where I come from, where a man goes to Mulago and they tell him that the operation is this much and he cannot afford and he has to go back home and tell his children that what's left for me is to die, you'd learn to believe God. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, the, the problem sometimes comes in the satisfactions that come over time and the comforts that God gives us. Oh, don't think they're Ugandan that you do differently. Because I've been around long enough to see people who sought God when they had nothing. I saw them. They were students. I saw them. And the Lord prospered them and some came sick and somebody tells you from today I'm going to serve God because I'm healed of an incurable disease. Two, three, four years later, they get a big job. They got a pen, you understand? They got a hot guy, and then, you know, she drives a nice car. Oh, yeah, Apostle, you know, I want to come, but sometimes I'm busy. You know, like, the week is so busy. And so, like, I can, you know, like, <laughs> busy? What do you mean, busy? I've been preaching the whole week. I'm busier than you. Somebody shout hallelujah. But the God of this world, blinds us in many ways. He can create, he can even create you busy and disconnect you from what you're supposed to be doing. Whatever it takes to blind you, false teaching, laxity, you know, the inability to handle blessing. I've seen people diverted because they cannot manage what God has put on their lives. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, the issue is not that God doesn't want to move, 
But there's not an opportunity for this glorious gospel to shine on the hearts of men. You see? Because of the God of this world. In Matthew, the fourth chapter, the eighth verse, to further prove this, at the temptation of Jesus Christ in the wilderness, if you remember the story, the devil takes him up into an exceeding high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Now, I want you to understand that was not a physical mountain. There's no mountain in the world that can show you all the kingdoms of the world. That must have been a spiritual. In fact, in one version, it says, in a split of second, he was carried and taken to a high what? To a high mountain. And then, yeah, in a moment of time. In a moment of time. One version says in a moment of time. That means he was here and boom, next, he's in a realm. Okay, so those of you who say, oh, I'm going to the mountain to pray. I want you to understand that mountains, they're spiritual and they're physical. Understand that concept. Some of you are, playing on, are praying on physical mountains, but you are, no, yes, physical mountains, but you are spiritually in a valley. <laughs> you know, people who go to prayer mountain to pray, and then they come back dry, broke, sick, you understand? Like everything bad has happened to them. There must be evidence that you're a seeker. That's why Jesus says, they that seek me, seek me in spirit and in truth. We have a different mountain from where we make our pleas. It's called Zion. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. He says, you are coming to Zion. Mount Zion. The city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem. To an innumerable company of angels. Imagine where you are when you're praying. Angels are on your side. Hallelujah. To the spirits of just men made perfect. They are before you. To Jesus Christ, the mediator of the new covenant. Whose blood speaketh better things than the blood of Cain and Abel. Vengeance. That's what we pray for. If you have not found that place. I don't care how high. You know some of you say, I know this mountain is low. I want a mountain eh, where I just reach there. And God says, go back my son. Now that you've reached here, everything is answered. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. It's a mountain of covenants. It's a mountain. It's sacred because of revelation. It's sacred because it's of spiritual vision, not physical. It's sacred because it's a positioning place. To be found of things that you could never find. Paul speaks of things which are unsearchable. Huh? And to whom, I'm, uh, and, and of whom I'm least of all saints. He says, was given unto me to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Unsearchable, unsearchable, unsearchable. There are things that a seeker cannot find, but the position of God would be found of. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is why positioning is better than seeking. So I'm not saying we're not seekers. I'm saying seeking is secondary. We seek position right. First. It's like saying flying, right, is good. But direction is better than flying. Because it has to come first. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I, imagine somebody can fly, but they don't have direction. Huh? You remember the story of the locusts? Huh? You know, locusts don't fly only by their wings. They fly by winds. The winds blow and they carry what? Locusts. You see what I'm saying? But when the wind comes, it could find a locust already facing the direction of the wind. And some locusts are found opposite. So they're blowing. It has to first flip a bit, turn, find direction. You understand? You're all in the wind, but you're not all facing the same direction. So it is with the way of the spirit. We have people who are carried by the wings of the spirit. They are being carried. They, they are flying spiritually. Something is happening on their lives. But they really don't have direction. They are not positioned right. And the result of that are glories that come with shame. You understand? The result of that are things that will happen to you but you cannot explain the pattern because you didn't study. You were not positioned to see how 
one step led to another. So you have successes that you can't actually impart or extend to another life because there was no direction. You just stumbled on things. And Christ can become a stumbling block. You only stumble on what you don't see right. Vision is key. You can't stumble on what you see. Oh. Somebody shout hallelujah. Okay, let's continue because of time. So he shows him the kingdoms of this world. On that mountain, a certain mountain. And, then, and the glory of them. And then he tells them that if you will bow to me, fall down and worship me, I will give all of this to you. Now, if what I said earlier was wrong, it wasn't true, then Jesus would have told Satan, you're lying. These kingdoms are not yours. They're for my father. Why are you lying? You see? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that have been the right response? Satan, you're lying. But if it was a lie, then it would not be temptation. Are you following? But it is true that this guy was in charge of all of these things. That's why I told you once that the world is divided in kingdoms. One time, I was in prayer. And then the Lord gave me a vision of how the world is divided. I was amazed. It's not according to continents and countries. No. That is why when you go on borders, certain people have things alike with the people on other borders. And the very challenges that attack people on certain borders are the very challenges that attack people on certain borders. No, no, leave, leave what men drew. No, no, no. That's not what makes nations. No. There's another design somewhere spiritually. There's a mapping spiritually that sort of breaks the earth into different kingdoms. And the leaders of those kingdoms are principalities. That's where the word principalities come from. They're not just in the district. Musoga. I don't know if you're Musoga, no pun intended. <laughs> I know, I don't intend anything. Oh, from, these are the spirits that attack uh, the Teso people. No, no, sometimes it extends beyond. Sometimes it's lineage, it's many things. That's for another day. So, this man is, Satan, is in charge of the world. This earth you're living in, because it has a God, the things that are never going to be fair. Because it's his realm. And God did not ordain the Christian to survive in this realm. That's a wrong interpretation of it. You were not called to survive in this realm. You were called to live above this realm. But you see, it is a hard thing to explain it to somebody who is younger. That's why earlier I told you, some struggle so much with what's in the world and the elements of this world because they do not have a relationship with God. But some, like I said, are born again, but they don't have a full understanding of where they really are. And because they don't have an understanding of where they really are, you find that the elements of the world subjugate. Okay? They take over. They put them into bondage. And that's what it says in Galatians. Chapter 4, verses 3. Paul says and testifies of himself. He says, even so when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. They were born again. Techno, beloved of God. But they were young. Nepios, not heos, the mature ones. So there are three Greek words here that all mean children. But your English word, your English Bible has all of these as children. There's technon, which is the beloved of God. Beloved children, okay? Then you have Nepios, which is the babies, like our little kids you see walking here. Oh, they're young, you see? And then you have the mature ones, like you guys with beards and deep voices. So spiritually also, there's a version of the mature one. When the Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, so are they the sons of God. The Greek word there is the heels, the mature ones. Go down and lead babies. You can call a baby and say, come, and it goes the other side. Don't. And he just continues to do. Why? Because the brain is yet forming. The toddler is trying to construct life and even learn obedience. You see what I'm saying? So God leads the what? The mature. That's why it's important for us to mature you. Because the more mature you are, the more you are led by 
God. Somebody shout hallelujah. So Paul says, when we were younger, we were led by the elements. We were bound under, he uses the word under the elements of the world. When the mosquito bites you, you had to get malaria. When you sat next to a person with COVID, you had to get it. When somebody sent witchcraft on you, it had to catch you. But you're born again, yes. And we still have Christians who are like that. So, it's not prayer in this instance. It's supposed to be knowledge. Feed them until they mature enough to know how to stand. Are you following what I'm saying? He goes down and, 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 and in, in verses 8. And he says, same Galatians 4. How be it then, when you knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are no gods, small g, right? They are nothing, but because you did not know God, you did service to them. And that is why it takes us back, especially if you are, who come from the African culture, go just three generations of your family where you come from, you'll find witchcraft. After your father, just after your father or your, grand, your grandfather, there's witchcraft. These are people who did service and to what they called gods, but by nature they were not gods. Some of you, it is two generations. Some of you, it's one generation. Some of you, you are the generation. <laughs> Recently, I'm soon going to do, a, a, I don't usually want to do deliverance services, but I'm going to do one. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you what. Over these few years, I can say decades, seven to ten years of space, there's a new form of witchcraft that has come. Hmm? And people have learned the art of going to witch doctors. You know, we have guys who are really strong. And it is now Unfortunately, back in the day, when you talked about witchcraft, the picture that would come to the head of a person was a very old aunt. That woman, eh? look at her. Eh? Back in the day, witchcraft was by a very old auntie or some old uncle in the village who doesn't die. Hmm? But now, witchcraft has entered 89 bones, 92 bones, 94 bones. These very cute things you see walking on Kampala. They go to a guy and they say, I'm tired of poverty. I'm not going to be poor. They give them something. And they arrest a man. Now, I'm telling you because that kind of deliverance has increased in my counseling. These little young beautiful things that pass by. Oh, 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 oh. Some of you. You're going to reconsider dating. These things of we are going out. You're, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I can even start praying right now and you see people flipping now. <laughs> let me teach. Let me give them a chance to repent. No, let me give them a chance to repent. Let me give them a chance to repent. But I tell you, young girls are going to witch doctors and they are arresting married guys. You just hear a woman saying, the man changed. He, this is not the man I married. No, apostle, this is not the man I married. He just finds in the evening. He... <laughs> they are tired of poverty. They don't want to struggle through life. So arrest like a guy's brain. He builds your house, buys your car, does everything for you. You look at a man and you see he's actually under some power. This man is not normal. He can't do the things he's doing on it. Somebody arrested the guy. Even young boys do it. Even those ones have had my stories. A woman once, even sometimes, some girls call me. A certain time back, I was dealing with a young girl. She arrested a guy who was married. And this, and their signs. The people in the first service were provoking me to say them, but I will not. Because I might spoil your debts <laughs> in September. In Around October there, we shall give you a call. Let me not spoil your <laughs> dates. But 
Leave me alone. Leave me alone. So a young lady comes and tells me, Apostle, in my olden days I tied the man. When I tell him I'm not going to talk to you and I refuse to answer his phone call in a week, he starts running mad. He'll drink, he'll do what, everything. Guy is not alone. Now I'm born again. I want my own husband. So, is there a way you can break this thing? We started going through fire, fire, leave, go. Why? Because the condition was, I either break it or she goes to the witch doctor to undo. And as a born again Christian, she could not go. You might think, some of you think you know what I'm talking about, but trust me, you don't. Another boy was a young man. He went and arrested a Muslim girl. And then the girl ran mad for him. And then the guy gets born again. Comes to Fanero. Transformed, consecrated. And the Muslim girls come following. <laughs> he sits, she sits. He gets out, she also what? She has not come for the gospel. You arrested me. <laughs> so the guy came to me and told me, Apostle, I need deliverance. It was so bad that the girl had tried to even kill herself. Because that's how bad, when they are rejected, they even can want to commit suicide. But it was some little thing done. And it wired the man. Now, hey, married men, <laughs> by fire, by force, ring of fire around us. In Jesus' name. <laughs> These dot com things have become crazy. Yo. So if you don't know how to guard your. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. There is witchcraft in secondary schools. And I'm soon preaching about it. I think recently, I, the Lord told me I, I should do it. A, a, a conference of teenagers and just put them but you send your child ready to hear things then you send them for me I carry my ashes and then you'll see what will come out of your own children I'm telling you I'm teaching about it soon on parenthood the number of young children running mad was not what we saw when we were growing up bipolar schizophrenia split personality disorders Oh, people are doing things on children because the devil has gone to the next level. I was with my wife and they brought an eight year, nine year old boy. And I was praying and the spirit of the Lord gave me a word of knowledge. I asked the boy, do you know a movie called SSS? And the boy said, I know it. It's my favorite. Prayed for the boy. And that's when the boy came back to his, his, his senses. He got a demonic transaction through a movie, a TV series. One time I was rebuking devils out of a girl and they started speaking that they came through a Nigerian movie. I'm telling you these things are so. Some of you just saying your kids don't want to go to school. They don't want to study. They are drinking at a young age. They are rebellious and you think, oh, no, it's just, he's just being like his father. No, your boy has something. And if you search, some of you realize your kids are under deep-seated witchcraft. Deep-seated. Another girl came mad one time and they brought me a child who was mad. And the Lord gave me a, a, a word of knowledge. And I gave her a month and what happened? And the girl confirms to me that in that month somebody slept with her. And the moment they had sex with her, the girl flipped. Bipolar. We discovered the boy was an agent. One time I was in a, in a, what was it? Where was it? Gozi Deji. A girl confessed that she had been a devil worshiper since she was little. And she started telling people whatever she had done to them. I just remember I entered with a man of God and told him, I sense, I sat in, in the chair. And I told this, this minister, I said, I sense the spirits. I sense abortion. I'm smelling abortion here. Man of God said, what? It's amazing. In that meeting, I don't know if some of you remember that. In that meeting, the power of God goes through this girl. 
she stands up and starts to confess how she has been doing witchcraft. And then she said, by the way, I'm even responsible for the abortions because I'm the one who did this and that. Da, 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 da. You, you, you. She started pointing at six girls. I told her, stop! <laughs> then she said, but your prayer secretary, because interestingly, she had also joined the Christian Union as a leader at some point. So, when you say you're praying for your children, Stop playing. Pray. Pray. Let the madness hold others, but not your child. Ah, 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 ah. It can touch anybody else, but not my seed. So, the, the, you did service to these things. Some of you up to now, you're born again, you're in Fanero. Yes, you come every Thursday and Sunday, but there's something you can't get out of your bed. Some witch doctor told you, if you remove this one, eh, you're gone. So, you're born again, but something tells you what if I am. I'm going to give you one week to look for me privately. I'll not, I'll not share your story. I'll not expose you. Look for me one week and tell me, Apostle, I have things to burn. I will create a way where you'll not be known, but I will burn them for you. Because some of you are living with things in houses. Sometime a very beautiful girl came. Apostle, I need an appointment. I need to bring some things for you. I thought a seed was coming. Ooh. The girl came with bags. I'm tired of witchcraft. She didn't look like the aunties. She didn't look like the aunties. This was another version. And because I needed to cover her, uh, her privacy, I made sure that nobody knows that she had brought them in there, whatever, met all the people that I was supposed to meet. Then eventually, I took my things out and I burned them privately because I need to protect her person. But when you see the photo, hey, you'd reconsider, especially you guys who just got dating. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say here is that we have done service to these things. Some of you, you know your parents very well. They are born again, like anyone you know. But they have something, it's in a sack somewhere. It's in a bed, it doesn't leave. They have a certain stick in a corner. They have a spear. You understand? There's some things, that one, they would kill you if you remove it. They will kill you. They will kill you even though they fear God. They will kill you. You understand? They have something in back cloth. It's hidden under their bed. They have a suitcase. It has things that confuse you. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, my heart is that that's where we came from and became born again. But some of us, because we stayed babes, we stayed with these elements. You see, we did not denounce them. Are you following what I'm saying? God, I repeat for the last time, he did not come to help you survive a wicked world. He came to elevate you above this world. Did he not say that even though you are in this world, you are not of this world? What do you think he meant? What do you think it meant? That's why it says in 1 Corinthians. Oh, no, 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 no. Let us first finish verses 9 Galatians. He says, but now after you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements where unto you desire again to be in bondage? How can you know God and still keep that thing? How can you know God and still go for a family ritual? How? It means you're taking back yourself again to bondage to the very elements God has delivered you from. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of you, oh, they're calling us, smile, they have rituals for twins. Don't go there. Tell them that's not me. Even if you have twins, my twins will be dedicated before God. I don't go beyond that. No, it's family culture. What do you mean by culture? 
Do you know what they're doing to your babies? Some of you, they cut things when you are young and you're also cutting your babies, yet you're born again. You're taking yourself back to those elements that your great-grandfather served you. Some of you, by your actions, you have taken your family a hundred years back or 20 years back or 30 years back by your one action. So I tell some of you, be very deliberate with everything you do, even your marriages. Because you don't know what you're doing to yourself. You think you do, but you don't. Because you could sacrifice truth on the altar of love. And Satan knew this is all he needed to take you back where you're coming from. No. Don't compromise your life because some of you don't know what this thing can do the next five, ten years. You don't have a clue. You don't have a clue. The devil does not transact for peace. No. He will look for you until he'll kill you. If he won't kill you physically, he'll kill something of you. And so you don't think that you're worth enough to fight for what God has placed on your life? You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to say. And deaths. And then they start putting rituals over you because your father's died. Hey, hey, stand up. Stand up and tell him no. Yes, I've lost my father, but no, 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 no. These are not things I believe in. They start putting things on your head. A silly man without a covenant starts even slapping you. He says, and you're there. And then after that, you come to find her and say, Suka Barade. Go. Fire. If you came out, you came out. You're taking yourself under. That's not where you are. Nobody under me can ordain me. Nothing. It can't happen. Nobody under me can bless me. Yeah, no, 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 no. I know who can put a hand on me. Not everybody can put a hand on me. No. I'm telling you. I understand my parents. I understand the spiritual people I know. Not everybody. That's what I'm trying to tell you. But some of you, you have a witchcraft auntie. You know she does witchcraft. And then they say, pray for you. And then you put your head. No. Use wisdom. Don't offend, but say, let me come in. Eh? Uh, run away. <laughs> yeah, not everybody should pray for you. And that's the truth. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, he, he says in 1 Corinthians 8, 5, For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or earth, as there be gods many or lords many. But to us, you see, the first one, he says there are big gods. Are they big or small? Small gods. And as many lords, small L. He says to us there is but what? One God, the Father, comma, of whom are all things, comma, and we Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We in him. Let me ask you. How does a demon go through the father and get to you? Except you're the one who came out. Who is understand what I'm saying? How can disease go through the father and get into you? Except you came out in ignorance and transacted with the world. How can poverty go through the Father? How can failure go through the Father? How can struggle or strife go through the Father? How can death go through the Father and get to you? This is a problem. Many of you are awakened to the human being you are and not the Christ being in you or in whom you are. The Bible says in him you live, move, and have your own being. That means you're more than a human being. Your being is defined in a person. It can no longer be defined without that person. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm trying to help you understand how to fight. Yes, maybe you're dealing with something, a disease or trouble or poverty. Yes, we, let me tell you, all of us, many of us here have things. Some of you just don't tell. Some of them, you will just walk to a doctor and they say the report and you walked out. 
you never told anybody, but if you were to open your mouth, it has taken so much faith for you to even be alive up to now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of you have had things that were to bury you, but somehow you fought out. You just don't open your scars for men to see, but you have your scars. Are you following what I'm saying? But the fact that you're still alive, even when the devil would have wanted to kill you long ago, it is living proof that there is something keeping you. There is somebody keeping you. There is a truth preserving you that will just not allow you to die. Ali, you might not be where you want to be, but at least you're alive to hear these words. Celebrate God for that. Because every word you hear tells you God must be up to something. Why is he sending this message to me now? Why am I hearing the words I'm hearing? If COVID had taken you, would you hear this? But how many of you call that to, oh, I can't breathe. Oh, I can't. But look at you. Now you're breathing. Somebody shout hallelujah. The greater one is inside you. Performing all things for you. Yes, some of you, your bodies are not yet perfect. Sometimes you wake up and the pain comes back. You don't know what to do. Yes. But at least, at least, fight. Fight. Get the list of your promises. If you have an issue of sickness, get a list. You know me? I prepared all of those, some of those, those scriptures long ago. Money, health, family. I prepared all of them. I compelled them and I put them on some note on mine somewhere. If anything just destabilizes me a bit, I open. Father, you said, and then I start speaking words upon my life. Because I'm positioning myself. And then it passes. And then the next person, and the next thing you know, you've made 10 years. You've not died. 20, you've not died. 30, you've not died. You understand? But where do we get from? The truth. Some of you, you don't know. When the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, it's these summons that you just come and sit in on Thursday that have kept you up to today. On Sunday, you come and listen. And then next thing you know, the body is agreeing. The body starts to agree. Your issues start reconciling. Why? Because the truth is coming. To us there is only but one God. By whom are all things. And we in him. And one Lord. Was that a small L? That's capital. Jesus Christ. By whom are all things. And we by him. You know what that means? It means... Everything is created by him and we create and change everything by him. That means there is nothing by Christ in the Father that cannot be changed. No disease cannot be reversed. No witchcraft cannot be reversed. No juju cannot be reversed. No damage of organ cannot be reversed. Everything can be reversed. Everything can be reversed by him. And then Paul says, next verse, how be it? There is not in every man this knowledge. And some up to today, with the consciousness of the idol, eat as unto food offered by idols, and their conscience being weak, they are defiled. And when the defilement comes in your spirit, your conscience is defiled. A stupid statement will come through at night. You have pain in your lungs. The conscience is defiled. And a spiritual person say, Kaza. And it goes away. Oh my God. You understand what I'm saying? Maybe it was just a, like a small thing going through to check you. Eventually, you diagonize yourself. Some of you have diagonized yourselves of diseases that don't even exist. They're not even in your body. But why? You're dealing with fear. You Google everything. Headache on the right side. 
Why? Because the devil gave you some suspicion of what it could be. Tuma. He just says, Tuma. And then it runs away. <laughs> By the way, so and so died, and they began with a headache, and then they found tumor. Mm. Then you start. <laughs> Let me tell you. Counseling is interesting. You hear stories. You ask, why, why do you think you're sick of this? Because I go good. <laughs> what? I go good. But you see, fear, I tell people, fear is actually rebellion. Because fear is faith directed to what you don't want and what's against the will of God. That's fear. It's actually faith directed to negative energy. It's not just, no, it's faith. If, if you can get that very huh, feeling and direct it to good, you'll be amazed what will happen in your life. Because the beginning of fear is the beginning of bondage. Some of you, you live in doubt all your life. You believe everything here. Yay, meha, I believe. And then some shakes your little, wah, and then you go in and believe 3001. No, no, minus. Eh? Minus degrees, eh? minus 50. You understand what I'm saying? I know somebody who fell sick once. Born again. Fell sick. And then one day the father comes and tells the fellow, why don't we go certain witch doctor? Because certain witch doctor, because you have treated this thing for so long. We can even there God can work. I've known some who even go. You know what you've done? You're telling God, I don't belong here. You're taking yourself back to bondage. Because Satan can't heal. He can only maintain. He only maintains. So now I'm purifying your conscience by speaking the truth. Now you know. You are above all. The Bible says you are seated in Christ. Far above all principalities and powers. It takes so much for you to go back down. And neither can the devil be invited up if you don't let him. He can't actually be invited up. He can only go down. Forgive my language. You see what I'm saying? So what is my message to you today? Stay above. Stay above. The Bible says our conversations are in heaven. Where Christ is. We are seated where he is. Far, far. The Bible used far. Above all principality, comma, and power, comma, and might, pa, comma, and dominion, comma, and every name that is named, not only in this world, HIV, but also in the world which is to come. We are above. Stay above. Refuse to sink. Just stay above. That's where you really are. When anything comes to pull you down through thoughts and negative energy, speak, 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 speak. You know, I love this man called Smith Wigglesworth. I studied him as a teacher of faith. If I was looking for a text of faith, that I have my, my guys. That was one of my guys. But Smith Wigglesworth said, I don't know how to relate or believe God from a feeling perspective. You, very deep. He's saying, I don't know how to relate with God from feeling. In other words, he has felt sick, yet he was healed. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, a, a wonderful man of God gave a story of his mother. His mother was sick and uh, she was suffering from depression. Had lost the father and many things. So bad, bad depression. She was a student suicidal. She was dealing with suicide, depression. And then they, he takes this lady to a doctor who happens to be a Baptist doctor. 
And the doctor tells her that we have all the medicine we can give you to deal with depression. But the greatest thing that you can ever do for yourself is to learn to use your mouth and refuse to be depressed. This man, it was Kenneth Hagen, he says his mother went back home and every day she woke up and said, I refuse to be depressed. I refuse to be depressed. I refuse to be depressed. I refuse to be. He said the mother spoke it and spoke it and spoke it until she gained sanity and she died the same woman. This tongue was saying, I'm not sinking. That's the language. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be sick. Devil, you're lying. I will not die. This is not me. I know that I'm okay. In the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says that he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my name. I refuse to be sick because by his stripes, I was healed. I refuse this thing. If it increases, you also what? Hey! I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be sick in Jesus' name. I refuse to be sick. My heart, get to order. My lungs, get to order. You start to speak to your body. I refuse these bones to be weak. You joints, get to order. You joints, I refuse you to be sick. If it hardens you, the devil fights hard, but he cannot fight long. He can fight hard, but he cannot fight long. At one point, he'll say, you know what? Let me let go of the woman. Let's get to our feet. I'm going to give you just a few minutes to address some issues. Speak to yourselves. Say, I refuse my marriage to fail. I refuse my children to fail. I don't fall sick. Greater is he which is in me than he which... Those are the things you should speak. I'm a success. I will never regress in the name of Jesus. Progress is my story. Come on, speak. Come on, open your voice and pray you unravel me be the melody you surround me with the song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears a gun. I'm no longer slave to fear. I'm young, a child of God. I'm no longer slave to fear. I am child of God come on love has called my name I've been born again into your family your blood flows through Sing it again. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. I've been born again to a family. Your blood flows through my veins. Sing, I'm no longer I'm no longer to 
I'm a child of God Sing, I'm no longer I'm a child of God of this world has nothing in me. Now I want to release the anointing of miracles right now because I see God is touching somebody. Power of the Holy Ghost! He's healing somebody. He's delivering somebody. He's redeeming you from that deadly disease that the doctors say is incurable. I command that disease to loose. I rebuke the bondage of witchcraft and its work on your life. Get out, you devil! Heart disease heal in Jesus' name. Kidney disease at the sound of my voice heal. Cancer heal. HIV heal. Liver issues heal. Pancreas heal. Back issues heal. Joint issues heal. Sharaboli katara la 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 la. You split the sea. My feet are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and say, I am a child. Sing it with your mouth. 
off. Tell him, Lord, just split the sea. It, it means you he you did the impossible. So I could walk right through it. My fear, I drown in perfect love. a mighty hand clap of praise come on clap like you know what God has done for you today come on clap 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you're here and you were dealing with any form of sickness, begin from here and refuse to go under again. Okay? And those of you who are out there and you've come to this service, how can you refuse Jesus? after what you have heard. Bring that lady, bring that lady. That's witchcraft. Bring her, bring her for me. Oh my God, there's deliverance here. And by the way, she's not the only one. I sense about four people. You feel like you want to vomit now. There's something coming out of you. In fact, some of you feel like cough. You're coughing. Bring her here. You spirits of death, I rebuke you. Put that down, put that down. I command that spirit that came in a version of a male to leave you. Go! It actually had sort of married her. You know, the devil is a liar. You're free. You're free. You're free. You're free. You're free. You're free. Now, if you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, where are you? Are you where? Are you above or under? This is the time for you to say, I am tired. I'm ready to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. If you're there, come now and receive him as your Lord and Savior. You split the sea.
child of God. Come. Oh, you spit the seed. Come quickly. I know this is your day. God is going to deliver you. Totally. Totally. More street children. I told you we feed them every Sunday. They're here. These are the people Jesus died for. I get excited when we get them from there. Somebody clap your hands to Jesus. We feed these kids every Sunday. And some we're trying to take to school. Wow. 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 Those of you who are here, just repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I thank you because you died for my sins and you were raised for my glory. Today, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, I've seen many of these kids don't know English. Eh? I think you have to lead them. Pastors, help them. Hmm? The rest of you, please follow uh, that gentleman. We're going to take your names and numbers and pray for you and help you understand what it means to be born again. Father, I thank you because the lives of these people are not going to remain the same again. Amen. See you on Thursday. Will you carry somebody? Yes. Cover. Cover. Cover by your grace.
podcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at fenero.org. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Fenero, make manners.